Welcome to today's reflective act of worship from Newcastle Cathedral. We hope you will find it helpful as we gather today, from many different places, yet one in faith and hope. As God's people we have gathered, let us worship God together. Wherever you may be, try to find a still place, a safe place, a place where you can take a moment to pause in body, mind and spirit. Remember that there are many others, both near and far away, pausing and praying with you in this moment too. Let us pray. Faithful one, whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Having stilled and prepared ourselves to hear God's word for us, let us listen to the gospel reading appointed for today which is from Luke chapter 21, beginning at verse 5. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, he said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another, all will be thrown down. They asked him, Teacher, when will this be? And what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and in various places famines and plagues, and there will be dreadful portents, and great signs from heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Remembering that the word of God is living and active, let us now reflect on what God might be saying to us today through this passage of scripture. Today's reflection is offered by Rob. It's funny how quickly things can come to seem permanent. Perhaps it feels like our current situation has been going on forever. If you look at a map of medieval Europe, you find all sorts of kingdoms which seemed permanent in their day but are now barely remembered. Kingdoms rise and kingdoms fall. The temple which is being admired at the beginning of this passage was actually the second temple. By the time of Jesus, it was a few hundred years old and had just been refurbished by Herod. A few short years later in 70 AD, the Romans destroyed it. It wasn't old, but it seemed permanent. And then it was turned down, torn down. Thus passes the glory of the world. The Gospels were written very early in the life of the new Christian community and thus contained both reliable witness accounts of Jesus and the disciples and also an insight into what these new Christian communities needed to hear. Luke is dated to shortly after the destruction of the temple and during the persecution of Christians and Jews by the Roman Emperor Domitian. So these words are speaking to a community traumatised by war and persecution and they say the strife that you see all around you is the way a broken world is. Do not let these things drive you away from God, because God is trustworthy. The temple may be torn down, but God cannot be torn down. When you are shaken, don't be deceived by quick answers or siren calls to other protectors. Stick with God. It's a bit like Revelation, which we are reading in morning prayer at the moment. Well, there's a danger that either we try and take everything literally, looking for the hidden clues which help us to discern the times and know when Christ will return, or we dismiss most of it as a bizarre dream 
and has little to say to us today. Like this passage, it was written to a Christian community under pressure to reassure them that despite all the terrible things that are going on, God is still in charge. There will be wars and rumours of wars. There will be things which will strike fear into our hearts. But we do not need to be afraid because God loves us. He is with us and he wins. In today's passage, Jesus warns against fear and anxiety, sending people down the wrong track. And he commands them to discern wisely which voices to listen to in the face of anxiety, whether that be for us today, COVID, international relations, Brexit, or whatever our own personal crisis is. We aren't to lose heart and try and fit our faith to our situation, but rather to keep faith, go deeper into what we have received and keep making the decision to trust God. It's an act of will sometimes. He loves us, he is with us, and he wins. In the face of anxiety then, whatever causes that anxiety, we're to hold fast. The world is ever changing, and difficulty and strife are part of human experience. We need to be careful that our response to anxiety and trouble is not to run after other safety nets, other gods and props, but rather to hold on to Christ. Unlike the temple which can be torn down, he is the living temple, the unshakable, permanent sanctuary who will never let us down. God loves us, he is with us, and he wins. Amen. Take a moment, press pause if you want, to reflect on what, if anything, struck you during today's reflection. Were there words of comfort? Were there words of challenge? And now, remembering that all are precious in God's sight, let us pray. Almighty God, for whom we look and long, and watch and wait. Give us wisdom to know and courage to serve you in times of quiet and in times of trouble. Help us to put our trust in you and work for the coming of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Christ our King, we pray for all who are dealing with crises in our world, all in national and local government, all in the emergency services, all in the health service, and for organisations that encourage the nations of the world to work together. Strengthen them and protect them. Give them wisdom and compassion for all your people. Christ, have mercy. Spirit of peace and healing, we commend to your tender care all who are troubled and distressed, all who are weary and despairing, all who are abused and oppressed, all who are lonely and grieving, all who are sick in body, mind or spirit. Give them comfort and strength and hope in your kingdom where love will triumph over all things. Lord, have mercy. God the Father, help us to hear the call of Christ the King and to follow in his service whose kingdom has no end. For he reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, one glory. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, so we pray. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us dwell in the peace and protection of God, this day and always. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Now that our choirs have returned to sing in the cathedral, the format of our daily reflections has changed. On Thursdays and Fridays, a short reflection and prayers will be offered in the context of a service of choral evensong, which you can follow here on YouTube at 5.30pm or watch at your convenience later. Monday to Wednesday's reflections will remain the same. We hope and pray that you will continue to find them helpful. <laughs>